Hey guys, I've been looking to improve my vertical jump and over the last six weeks I've followed a weights based program adapted off a T Nation article. The article is called Get Strong, Get Fast, Get Vertical. It outlines a six week program based on weights and plyometrics with the idea that it will make me jump higher. I covered the details of the program in another video so here I'm just going to skip straight to the results and then a brief review. As with VertShock, I measured my progress with a standing vertical every week and over the six weeks I saw a gain of three centimeters which is 1.2 inches. Uh, what should be immediately obvious is that after day one I didn't jump any higher until the program was over. This is in contrast to VertShock where my tests were trending upward every week. This is an important consideration when you're scheduling this kind of training because you don't want your performance to suffer for six weeks in the middle of the season when you're competing every weekend. Heavy weights and a strength foundation belong in the off season because it doesn't matter that you can't jump very high as long as you know the results are coming. I also tested my running vert. On day one it was 26 inches, meaning I was 5 inches from being able to touch the rim. And after 6 weeks I did manage to increase that to 27 inches. Now onto the review. Most articles like this end with a generic template that feels like it hasn't been tested on anyone. So here I felt comfortable changing a few of the exercises in order to align it with what the vertical jump research said was the most effective. There were two lower body sessions and two upper body and since this is about jumping higher I won't spend too long on the upper body. All I'll say is it was very standard, it's exactly what I'd expect given that isn't the main focus and I ditched preacher curls in the final few sessions because they seemed entirely surplus to requirements. The first lower body session is written with heavy weights first. I was always taught to put the lighter explosive stuff first when you're fresh so I almost did the exercises in reverse order. I started with vertical jumps, I used floor to ceiling jumps, uh, meaning I touch the floor between reps, this forces me to explode from more of a crouched position and I felt these were effective. So too were the jump squats which I did with a hex bar instead of a barbell to have my arms in a more natural position. It said 20% of body weight but I used 20% of my max deadlift which was 30 kilos in weeks 1 to 3 and then I upped it to 45 kilos in weeks 4 to 6. This was as per the research which says for a trained person your peak power is around 30% of your max in a given lift. Speed squats involved a pause at the bottom to get rid of any momentum and allow me to explode up from a static position. Then it finished with back squats and RDL. I chose half squats meaning you stop at 90 degree knee bend instead of a full squat. This is mentioned a lot in the research as a viable option. I did athletics at university and I remember the high jumpers doing a lot of quarter squats so I thought a more sports specific range of motion could be suitable. Having never done these before they felt really awkward. The idea is that with a shallower squat you can have a heavier weight but I actually felt less comfortable changing direction at 90 degrees than I do from a full squat. My standard squat is to a 24 centimeter box and these half squats were to 35 centimeters so much higher. If I did this program again I would stick with full squats. The half squats involved changing direction in an unnatural position and didn't feel worthwhile at all. The second lower body day started with depth jumps which were from 50 centimeters up to 70 centimeters in the final three weeks. I adapted to these much quicker than I expected to. I was using 30 centimeters during vert shock so 50 and 70 felt quite intimidating. If we look at 30, 50 and 70 centimeter depth jumps and the forces involved it's roughly one body weight for every 10 centimeters you fall. Seven body weight sounds quite intense but for example triple jumpers will experience up to 22 body weights and that's through a single leg. I do recommend you read up on depth jump technique as poor form is likely to lead to injury. The second exercise was jumping split squat. I did an unweighted version in vert shock and there's not much to say on those. Then power cleans. My technique has room for improvement and that was my focus here looking to extend the hips aggressively for the second pull which is when the bar passes the knees. If you go to catalystathletics.com that has great resources for learning to improve the Olympic lifts. Finally, top squat and Bulgarian squat which are isometrics near the top and bottom range of motion. Uh, maybe these did something but in all honesty it felt weird to do static holds to improve my explosive jumping ability, not to mention incredibly tiring. Overall I'd say the second leg session was less effective. I'd maybe bring in hip thrusts to work on hip extension, I'd scrap the isometrics and bring in heavy front squats or hex bar deadlifts. I think I went too heavy on power cleans as well especially considering I was trying to refine my technique at the same time. 
Power cleans and jump squats were comparable in the vertical jump research. So if like me, you have sloppy power clean technique, uh, you can actually just completely substitute in jump squats whenever they come up in a program. Overall, I think the program was well laid out, but could do with changes to exercise selection, though some of that was my fault for tampering. Out of the 10 lower body exercises, four were classified as speed strength, two were strength speed, and four were limit strength. If you have good baseline strength levels, then a weights-based program should look to improve your rate of force development. You can actually still use heavy weights to develop RFD because it's your intention to move the bar as fast as possible that counts. You could still squat with 85% of your max. As long as you're trying to move the bar as fast as possible on the way up, it doesn't matter how fast it actually goes. That being said, you could still improve rate of force development with the more explosive exercises like the jump squats and the speed squats. So more uh, speed strength, strength speed, and less focus on the limit strength. Someone recommended the Vertical Jump Bible to me last week, and I'm passing it on to you as a recommendation. It's very good for the underlying principles of improving jump height. It also comes with multiple programs, depending on your experience. I'm going to run his general intermediate program at some point, probably in December. Thanks for watching, guys.